Out of darkness, God brings us light. Out of sin, God grants us forgiveness. Out of death, God gives us life. We bless this fire this evening, symbol of the light that God created on the first day, that led the chosen people out of Egypt and through the desert that shone in the sky over Bethlehem. It also symbolizes the warmth that God embraces us with, from the heavens, from the cross, from the gift of spirit. May it inflame our hearts, firing our mission to follow God's will ever more faithfully. May we look to God's Son, who showed us the way. In a special way, we remember Debbie Gownley during this Mass. Good brethren, brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to the Word and celebrating its mysteries, then we shall have the same hope of sharing the hope, triumph over death, and living with, the God, with Him in God. Oh, let's pray, O oh God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may obtain the fe uh, celebrate the festivities of ending splendor to Christ our Lord. Amen. Emily, bring the candle over here so I can read this a little bit better. I gotta light this place. I'm gonna light it now though. Okay, so I have a wig here. And you can put it out. Put a cover on it first, right there. Well, go ahead. Okay, do it. Okay, you take it outside now. I bless it in this. Yeah. Anybody help? You can help the door open for him. That doesn't work. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you don't get catch on fire yourself. Be careful. Ah. Yo. Let me bring the candle over here. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning. The beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to Him, and all ages in Him be glory and power, through every age and for every, forever. Amen. By His holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guide us and perfect us. May the light of Christ rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. I can get your book.
I'm seeing where I'm going. <laughs> Pastor Brian, okay. We'll stop. Christ our light. See the light, but I can't see. Nothing over there. This is the darkest we ever had. Come up here. Christ our light. Praise be to God. That's why I can't see where I'm putting it. Take so let them exalt the host of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as With the light from her eternal King, let all corners of the earth be dead. Now we turn into gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice. Arrayed with the lightning of His glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. It is true, right and just, with heart of love of mind and heart, and with divine service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible. The Almighty Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord, His Son, His only begotten, who for our sake made Adam's death to the eternal Father, and pouring out His own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feast of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true man, whose blood erased the doorpost of the universe. This is the night when once you will let our forebears, Israel's children, Slavery in Egypt, and we did pass dry shore through the Red Sea. This is the night that with the pillar of fire perished the darkness of sin. This 
We're going to put the lights on now when you put your candle out. That way you can read it. Here. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, who are wonderful in ordering all of your works, may those who have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed, the second day. Then God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin, so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin, and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Everything came, evening came, and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day, the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. 
have dominion over the fish of the sea, birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made and found it very good. Evening came and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you, lift up your staff, and with your hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his armies, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, 
took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, so that it turned into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's chariots and horses and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic. And he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn, the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head-on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. And the water flowed back. It covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea and with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. He is my God, I praise him. The God of my Father, I extol him. Let us sing to the Lord, he has chariots and army he hurled into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let us the flood waters covered them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has shattered the enemy. Let's You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your the place where you made your seat, O Lord, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us take 
Let us pray. O oh God, who by the light of the New Testament have unlocked the meaning of wondrous work in former times, so the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and over foreshadows the Christian people and the nation delivered from slavery. Grant, we pray, that all nations obtaining the privilege of Israel by merit of faith may be born by partaking of your spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, yet they have to leave their land. So I have relented, because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness for you, through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Almighty and ever living God, so hope of the world, so by the preaching of your prophets, unveil the mysteries of this present age. Firstly, increase the longing of your people, for only at the promptings of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If, then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank <laughs> you. 
I couldn't see in the back, and now the bright lights of the YouTube back case. Are there any young people up here that could come and listen to my Easter story? I always have a Christmas story and Easter story. Some young people, I thought I saw some sitting there. <laughs> Anybody under 25? No. <laughs> any young people, little children, anybody? If not, I can make it. There you go. Look at that. That's good. We got a baby here. There you go. Any others? The youngest one here. Well, I think I'm going to make it a, uh, I can turn it into a story for adults, too. One of my favorite stories that you'll find in Luke's Gospel is a story about the road to Emmaus. And it says the um, road to Emmaus, two people were walking away from Jerusalem because they heard about the crucifixion of Jesus. And they were very saddened. So, you know, anytime you have a problem in your family or you have a death in the family and emergency, what do you do? You call other people. You call relatives right away. You've got to talk to somebody about it. So they're walking along the road. They're going away from Jerusalem. Apparently, they lived in the town of Emmaus. You have Emmaus in Pennsylvania, right? They're going to Emmaus, named after that Emmaus. And walking away from it, getting away from what horrible thing happened to Jesus. They didn't want to so much to think about it. They're discussing it, but they had to get away. But while they were walking, somebody started to walk with them. They didn't recognize him. They recognized him, and um, then he just started talking to them. And by the way, uh, it said, they told you only one name. Who were the two walking along the road to Emmaus? It says, one was Cleopas. Cleopas' name is mentioned only twice in the whole Bible. Imagine that his names are often mentioned many times, but Cleopas... I have to get, get, maybe next time my baby can baptize it, Cleopas, because it's only, it's a rare name, only twice in the Bible. So where was the other time that Cleopas was found? You find Cleopas saying, um, walking along the road of Emmaus with somebody else discussing how sad it was that Jesus was crucified. Where else it says in Luke's Gospel, standing at the foot of the cross when Jesus died, was dying, Mary, his mother, was there, John the Apostle was there, and guess what? The wife of Cleopas was there. So the wife was, had the courage to stand and watch Jesus die on the cross. Obviously, she told her husband, Cleopas, where she is now, I don't know, but that's when he heard the sad news. So she came home and said, oh, it was so hard, but I stood beneath the cross. So now Cleopas is walking with another friend down the road, 
And, uh, and they were very shocked at what happened. So, and then suddenly somebody's walking with them. And who is it? Well, who it is, actually, it's Jesus, but they don't recognize him. So imagine, um, well, you'd think they would have recognized him. Imagine how he would look after the crucifixion. You know, he was beaten on his back. He had scars in his hands and his feet. A soldier punched him in the face. Even on a shroud of Torah, you could see the uh, swelling under his eye. He was bruised, beaten. He would have looked like, wow, you would look, look at what you went through. So they didn't make that. Obviously, he looked very beautiful. He looked very beautiful, right? Yeah, so they didn't notice him. He said, wow, look at, look how good he looks. Now, one thing he kept was the scars on his hand and his feet. Because he's wearing sandals, so they couldn't see his scars. But obviously, he didn't show them his hands. You know, I often say there, there's no scars in anybody in heaven. The only one that kept the scars in his hand was Jesus up in heaven. To remind us of what he did for us. So they didn't recognize. So obviously, something happened to Jesus. No more bruises, all the swelling in his face, the marks from the thorns, or scratches, beating marks, bruises all over. Go on. Well, we know why, of course. You know, he was resurrected. He had a, a, a resurrection of his body, and he had a glorified body now, that it was beautiful, healthy, and healed. Because, you know, we're promised in our resurrection that someday when we rise again, we're going to have a glorified body. Imagine that. All the things that go wrong with the body. The arthritis is gone. The bad knee is gone. The everything, everything's gone, and you're just healthy, just beautiful. And that's why they didn't recognize him. So they're walking along, and you know the story, of course. Then they say to him, um, do you know who he was? And they say to him, well, don't you hear what happened to that Jesus of Nazareth, how they crucified him, how horrible it was? <laughs> Didn't he know about it? He was the one that went through it. And they said, you know, and some women that we heard in the gospel today at the tomb, we heard that in the gospel, they said they didn't find the body, but they saw the tomb empty. And of course, in other cases, they saw an angel tell them, he's not here. And they still didn't believe. They're like, they were skeptical yet. Like, they still pictured him as being crucified and dead. And what does he say? Well, he says, he starts to open up the Bible for him. He goes back to the Bible, Old Testament, and that's all he had was Old Testament at that time. And he tells how it's all the prophets of old and the mothers forecast, prophesied, predicted that there, there would be a Messiah who would suffer. So don't be surprised that he suffered. He still, you thought he wasn't the Messiah. You thought he was, and then you thought when he got crucified that he was no longer the Messiah. But look, it tells you in the Bible right there that the Messiah would suffer. And so when they thought, you know, when they were putting all their hopes in him, they said, we hope that he was the one, he was the Messiah. Maybe we put our hopes in the wrong person. No, you didn't put your hopes in the wrong person. Jesus was the right person to put it in. And then, of course, they're walking along, and it's getting late, and they said to him, uh, come and stay with us. He probably stayed overnight. But he just said overnight, you'll find what happened. <laughs> and they said, uh, and have a meal with us. And what happens is it says, while he was at the meal, that he said, and it says he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them, and their eyes were open, and they recognized him. They went, you're Jesus, we know who you are now. And he vanished from their sight. So what do you think that, was that bread just bread? When he blessed the bread, what did he say? What, we, what he says, what he said at the Mass, at the Last Supper, this is my body given for you. He turned that bread into his body, his now glorified body in that Eucharist, and he fed them with that. And then he, they saw me, and knew he was there, and then he disappeared. And they were talking about when they were walking along, you know, they said, you know, when he was teaching us, our hearts were burning inside. It was so beautiful, but they didn't grasp it. Now, isn't that interesting? You know, our church, as the Catholic Church, we believe in the Word of God, the Bible, the New Testament. But we also believe in Holy Communion, the Eucharist. So sometimes there's other churches that don't have even, and their communion, you know, we know it's just um, a symbol for them. For us, it's not a symbol. But they don't have too much emphasis on that. They're, 
They're along for preaching. Their pre preachers can preach for hours. Don't worry, I won't do that tonight. But they can preach for hours, you know. And they, But guess what? Notice, Jesus preaching, they still didn't recognize him in his preaching. Could you find a better preacher than Jesus? I wouldn't want to say I was a better preacher than Jesus. No one can say that. So there's never a preacher that can preach as beautiful and powerful as Jesus. And still it wasn't enough for them to recognize him. But in the breaking of the bread, it says, when he broke the bread, this is my body, and gave them and fed them with that. That's when they recognized them. So when you think about that, if you really want to know Jesus, you really want to you know, see him spiritually and have an experience of him, you can listen to preaching all day long. It's being really beautiful and interesting. And But if, without the Eucharist, without communion, you don't have that experience that these people on the road to Emmaus did. Because now they found Jesus. They knew he was risen, that he's alive. And we thank the Lord that for our Catholic faith that we have the Word of God. And Jesus inspires the others throughout the church to preach the Word, but he also is truly present in a few moments on our altar under the form of bread and wine. And a blessed and happy Easter to all. You were very good, by the way. <laughs> Thank you for listening. It's good I didn't put you to sleep, right? <laughs> okay, we're now going to do the uh, blessing of the water and uh, baptismal promises. Brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water He has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May He graciously renew us, that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom he, we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night, and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation, and still the greater work of our redemption, generously bless this water, for you created water to make the fields fruitful, to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant, you were to enter upon, upon the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have, been, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of our baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism to Christ our Lord. Now we have the baptismal promises. Dear brothers, you may stand for this if you can. Dear brothers and sisters, to the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let's renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renew, renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, and if you, I know you believe, and the answer is I do. Do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I, I do. do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I, I do. do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who has given us birth, new birth in water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Okay, now. Okay. Oh, we can move on. That's a good idea. and uh, you know the promises took the place of the of the creed and also the, took the place of the penitential right at the beginning of the Mass. Filled with joy in the Lord's victory over sin and death, the promise of the resurrection, we turn to our loving God and Father with our needs and the needs of our sisters and brothers. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may be healed of its sins and renewed in its mission, truly living out the gospel message that Jesus embodied, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people may do what is in their power to promote justice and provide mercy to those who sorely need it but have little or no power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those whose life is not fully valued by our society, for the unborn, for those who are poor, for refugees and those seeking asylum, for those nearing the end of their lives, that their dignity may be restored and upheld around the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are baptized into Christ Jesus on this holy night, that they might live in the newness of life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died recently, that they may be gathered into paradise by Jesus, the bridegroom and lover of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's continue to pray for peace in the Holy Land, the Middle East, and Ukraine, and in Haiti, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And God, our Father of life, you raise your Son, Jesus, from the dead, offering new life to all of us. Grant us the grace to live our lives with this awareness, knowing that even death can be, can be overcome, and that life in Christ is a precious gift. We ask this in all our prayers through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, the risen Lord, who is and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Please, please be seated for the collection. Offertory. Please join in singing Roll Away the Stone, number 166 in the Missalette.
us all you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, put in the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine. Share in the divinity of Christ to humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we will receive the wine we offer you, for the divine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Let's be God forever. The humble spirit of God may be accepted. Except we pray, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that has been begun in the Paschal Mysteries. May the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed death, but by rising, restore our life. Death overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people, Exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, your Lord, and Governor throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Timothy our Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating that most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus. Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that to their prayers and merits in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, let me pray, look graciously upon this oblation of your service, that of your whole people, and of your whole family, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and come among the flock of those you have chosen. And make your whole family, which we make, we offer to you, also for those who have been pleasing to you, to give new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them the forgiveness of all their sins, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to O God, his almighty Father, giving him thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice into his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chance to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we hear the Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we as servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. 
In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be born by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, that all of us who through the participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, open your abundant mercies, as we grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. And most we beseech you into the company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us where we pray from every evil, basically grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and save moral distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace you grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. But I'm not worthy to enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body rest. Our communion hymn is number 569 in the music issue, Join in the Dance, number 569. Yeah. <laughs> 
Participating by YouTube, uh, we'll do the act of spiritual communion written by St. Alphonsus Liguori. Glory, uh, um, uh, Glory, Glory. I saw in the Vatican Mass, Holy Thursday Mass, they had that they used this very same prayer at the end of the Mass that was televised from the Vatican, St. Francis Liguori. By Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And desire to receive you into my soul. Just so come out at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if we were already here. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. For those of us who just receive Holy Communion, we can say, I embrace you because you're already here in my heart and in my soul. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those who have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to thank everyone who helped and so much work behind the scenes. Uh, David Sicitano there, a little details, and our Australian minister, Amanda and Barry here, and then we have our elector, Henry Sagru, and we have... Brian helping and Shelly helping and choir Sherry beautiful and all the wonderful cantors and singers up there who sing with such gusto and uh, all the other work that went behind the scenes to help us put on the, one of the most beautiful liturgies of the whole year, which is this Easter vigil. So I pray that all of you will have a, a blessed and peaceful and, and happy uh, Easter. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Praise be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Our recessional hymn is number 172 in the music issue. Jesus Christ is risen today, number 172.
I would also like to thank Henry Zurich and Henry Zurich for YouTubing. So we thank you for your Kathy Gil Henry Zurich for YouTubing back there. I'll see you next week. Okay. Yeah. What to do next? I spoke to 